Well, Radio Gaga, you know, to my mind, this is possibly the best video that we were ever responsible for. And it, it shows the fact that there was a lot of thought before we even opened the coffers to pay for the thing and get going on it. Um, it was great that we were able to lay our hands on this original footage from Fritz Lang's fantastic Metropolis movie. Um, it came about because we contributed some some music for a, a restored version of Metropolis, which was being done at the time. Giorgio Moroda was in charge. And then interlinked, uh, David Mallet filmed this really beautiful sort of period um, 40s look footage. And also some lovely black and white stuff, which dovetailed in quite well with the original Fritz Lang stuff. And here we have us... Um, in a car which is zooming around, apparently zooming around in the original metropolis landscape. I think we seem to remember had a vodka and tonic hidden somewhere in that car. But, uh... You gave them all those old time stars through wars and wars. It always staggers me, I have to say this, that, that some people, I mean, maybe it's by choice, a lot of people hate us, but some people either don't get it or else pretend not to get it. You know, when we get to the part where it's, it's all very, um, um, totalitarian and everyone's got their arms in the air together people think that we kind of didn't know that that was the case <laughs> but obviously this is the song is about um, kind of recognition that things are getting very mechanized and meaningless and people are becoming robots so obviously there's a sort of irony to the whole thing which is built in and if people didn't get it I'm still shocked <laughs> if people thought we were really kind of um, some kind of you know trying to be dictators or whatever it's, well, the evidence is there for you to see, you know, it's very blatant that um, what we're talking about is let's look at things and, and, and worry if things are becoming too uh, robotic. That was so absurd, I mean, it was actually meant to be about the film, you know, it was meant to sort of mirror the film and uh, and this, the oppressed workers and etc. And, uh, and the Nazi thing is laughable. People will always find an agenda if they need one. And uh, it's a piece of entertainment, you know, as simple as that. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's just their British pop 
boxing press really. You know, look at the enemy. Be musicians or politicians or something. Beautifully done, I think, by David Mallet. I think it's one of his best pieces of work. And I think it's one of our best videos, although I must admit, I find the car, the polystyrene car, a little, uh, a little comical. But uh, it was quite funny. I don't think we look particularly comfortable in this, uh, in this car. I mean, I know I don't, and I don't think John does. I mean, Roger had a job to do, like driving the thing, so he was lucky. <laughs> I'm afraid he's got a job to do, he's singing. It really does have a nice feel, this, and what he's done with the framing of it. Although I can see it does look slightly Nuremberg-ish there. Yeah. Wasn't it? Wasn't consciously so. And of course, all the people who were in there are Queen fans who volunteered to be extras. And it was a great day for them and for us, I think. We did that. One of Mallet's great contributions, of course, is when the chorus comes, you get a hand clap. It was repeated electronically on the record, and so it sounds like a double hand clap. And Mallet kind of seized upon it and made it um, a double hand clap done by the audience. And it became something so... Um, well, I, I think it became one of the first great proofs of the power of television. The first time we played this, um, to a non-Queen audience at Live Aid, everybody knew what to do at that point, which is astonishing, really. So it has to be just the power of the video. There's no other way they would have known that they were kind of expected to <laughs> put their hands in the air and do this double hand clap thing. It was fun. We, we had three days, and it was, it was a bit of a monumental effort. And, uh, a lot of I'm splicing it together afterwards. Even in those days, this was this was this is one of our most over-the-top ones. But I think it worked this one. And, uh, I think to this day, I know it's one of Brian and my own particular favourites. And of course, the song was a very big hit, so which was very gratifying, especially for me, I suppose, being the writer. Very nicely done for the time.